Hello everyone. I am Sanket Bhandari. I am currently pursuing Masters in Data Science from Columbia University in the city of New York. I am also working at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub as graduate student assistant. In today's lecture, we'll see the topic of transfer learning and its application for computer vision. First of all, this is an introductory lecture on deep learning for computer vision, which will have a special focus on image recognition using transfer learning. It is very helpful if you have basic knowledge of convolutional neural networks. The slides covered in the lectures gives an overall theoretical understanding of transfer learning and its practical application. The contents of the lectures will be divided into four parts. First of all, we will see the overview of transfer learning for computer vision. Then we'll see what ImageNet challenge is. Then how to use uh, pre-trained models for solving real world problems and some hands on transfer learning with Keras and TensorFlow. Before diving into transfer learning, let's have a quick recall from convolutional neural networks. NNs are basically very good pattern recognizers. They learn rich features of an image and various techniques like max pooling, activation functions, enable CNNs to learn unique features which are unique to particular images. And uh, then the pre-trained models which are also CNNs trained from scratch on millions of images to learn various patterns and these models can recognize a class from a set of classes like maybe thousands of classes and from that after working on an incoming image they can predict which class this image will belong to. This image visualizes a pre-trained neural network model or a convolutional neural network model. So basically this section uh, like there, there is an input image of a cup and then we can see in each layer which features did it learn maybe it converted it into a particular color scale and then what did the model learn so we can say that cnns are not a black box model so we can see how it learned in each and every layer these are some limitations when you train cnns from scratch first of all it requires millions of images to predict with a good accuracy which is acceptable in real world and this makes them computationally very expensive and logically because of these two reasons training time of cnns is very high and you may not have the required millions of images to solve a custom use case that you are working on now image classification given an image the network can predict what class the image belongs to for example if you have an image of a dog and you feed it to the neural network model, the neural network model, if trained on dog images, can easily classify a dog image as a dog. Now, what is transfer learning? It transfers the weight from the neural networks and modify the last layer to suit your particular use case as shown in the given block diagram, as we can see that these are st this is a standard data set with millions of images here we are training a cnn from scratch which will take a long time and then we are using this pre-trained neural network and changing it some of the last uh, la last layers to suit our output classes this slide gives the theoretical definition of transfer learning which states that Transfer learning is a technique to reuse a pre-trained CNN to train on a custom data. That is, it is transferring the knowledge gained in pre-trained CNN to our particular use case. Here we can see a generic pipeline followed to perform transfer learning. We first take a pre-trained model and cut off the last layer of the network. Then we attach a new head with number of classes of our choice that is the particular use case that we are working on then we will train the model but freeze all the layers except the last layer like we will be freezing all, all the pre-trained layers and then we will unfreeze the last layer or if 
the accuracy is not too good, then we can fine tune the pre-trained model by unfreezing the last few layers and training only the last few layers themselves. So why does transfer learning work? And this is pretty important to understand. So here we can see the basic theory behind why transfer learning works. First of all, the pre-trained model has already learned the most important features. Reusing the same neurons and just changing the last layer helps in getting very high accuracy. This is because if you have noticed in the previous slides, the model pretty much learns the same initial features such as edges, etc., and learns the important features, or we can say the features that has high weightage at the end of the model. So what we are particularly doing it, we are just changing that end part so that all the features learned in the pre-trained model will be there to help our current use case. And as we are modifying the last few layers, it will increase the accuracy of the model. And uh, here we can see why transfer learning is popular or maybe more practical because it needs less data. Then uh, training time is very fast as we are all are using a pre-trained model. Then it's computationally very inexpensive and it solves real world problems pretty well. Now coming to the ImageNet data set part of our lecture. ImageNet data set is used as a standard since it has images with thousands of classes with varied shapes and has many million images. The data set is a benchmark that helps in gauging an architecture of a neural network model. So there is this competition called as ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, ILS VRC. And there are many papers published in well known conferences related to this particular con uh, challenge. And this competition has helped in the innovation of computer vision and it also helps the computer vision community and the world. It's as stated here, it's more like Olympics for computer vision. So pre trained networks. Since these pre trained neural network models are open source, they can be used to fine tune neural network models. Also, the pre trained models help in not training neural network models from scratch, and thus it saves huge infrastructure cost and time. Here we can see the summary on different model architectures throughout the years, like from ILS VRC 10, 11, 12. So we can see that the number of layers are increasing. Initially it was shallow, then there were eight layers, then 19 layers, 22, and in ResNet, the recent one, there are 152 layers. From here we can see like deeper networks. Then you should notice the drop in reduction in error rate because of adopting CNNs over the last 10 years. Now we'll see hands-on transfer learning for image classification. Here we will perform transfer learning on a custom data set where we'll be training a simple cat and dog classifiers. So given an image, the model has to predict whether an image has a dog or cat in it. The data set contains 2000 images of cats and dogs and we'll apply transfer learning to train the model. The pipeline will somewhat look like this, which is a generic pipeline. Like it will we'll first load the pre-trained model, then we'll customize the last layer of the network to be equal to the number of classes that is in our case, it will be two dogs and cat. Then we'll train the model with specific hyperparameter. Then we'll calculate the performance of the model. And if the performance is not that good, then we'll fine tune the model further. Fine tuning means like adjusting the hyperparameters to see whether performance increases or not. The red box denotes how different pre trained neural network models can be imported into the pipeline. So here we are loading a pre trained model trained on ImageNet Web. 
and most models can be imported with Keras applications and used to preload the ImageNet model. So we are using MobileNet V2 model, as you can see. So this is the line. There is TF that is tensorflow.keras.applications.mobilenet v2. Here we are attaching a custom final layer. Pre 10 neural network models have 1000 neurons in the last layer, that is 1000 classes. Since we are training a dog and a cat classifiers, and that we have only two classes, we must cut down the last layer and attach a custom layer with neurons that's equal to the number of classes and retrain the last layer. So, as you can see in the red box, we have cut the final layer and attached a custom layer, and it has same number of neurons as the number of classes for the final layer. The above command will train only the last layer of the neural network model. Now, this is the learning curve of the model that we just trained. From figure one, we can see that with more epochs, the accuracy on training data and valid validation data improves. And from figure two, we see that the loss is reducing over time. And this clearly indicates that the neural network model is learning. After training just the last layer of the neural network that we added to the pre-trained model, uh, we can see that the model is somewhat underfitting as the accuracy is like around 85 something as we can just go back and see the accuracy. This sometimes happens as there are there were only a limited images, like maybe only 2000 images in our data set. So the only changing the last layer might not help in this case. So we will train a few more layer, layers towards the end because last few layers, last few layers always has the maximum information about an image. And fine tuning these layers will help the model learn features better. Fine tuning is a technique which helps in unfreezing and training only the last few layers to get better accuracy and better model performance. So while fine tuning, the previous la layers of the pretend model will be frozen and we will only unfreeze the last few la layers. Here in this code, we can see we have set the fine tune at variable equal to 120. So we are freezing only layers up to 120 and after 120 we are unfreezing all the layers like we can see for layer in the base model dot layers. We are freezing all the layers before final tune that is like from zero till final tune we are freezing it that is layer dot trainable is set to false. So they won't be trained. Now from figure one, we can clearly see that the training and the validation accuracies are close to each other. This means the model is learning and able to generalize well and not underfitting or overfitting. If you compare these figures with the previous learning curves, you can see that there was a gap in training and validation accuracy, which suggested that the model is underfit and also the accuracy was somewhat lower for training. But after fine tuning, we can see the accuracy is increasing and they are uh, like training and validation accuracies are converging at some point. So we can see that the model is able to generalize well and not underfitting or overfitting. After fine tuning, the performance is better as there is a convergence in the graph. So the inference in this slide is that we can see that the model has learned well by fitting just 1000 images and uh, this technique of transfer learning can be applied to any custom data and we can perform simple recognition tasks by saving the computational cost by saving the time required for training as we were using a pre-trained model. So this slide is a conclusion slide which 
shows the conclusion that we used a small number of images of cats and dogs. And we were able to build a simple cat and dog classifier. The same technique can be applied to different images and we can build very good object recognizing systems. As the basic pre-trained model that we are using is developed in a prestigious competition that is first and these models are really built on or trained on millions of images. So they are bound to perform better than what we will be doing. So we are like taking all the good things from there or the features that they have learned and just changing the last few layers in which the model basically learns a lot and just giving that customizing that that last layer according to our use case. So the summary of the lecture is. Transfer learning uh, technique is applied when data is scarce. As you can see, we just trained the model using 1000 or 2000 images of cats and dogs, and still the accuracy was pretty good. And accuracy is generally very high. It is computationally very inexpensive and can be applied on any kind of images because the pre trained model is trained on billions of images. Thank you.